Hi and welcome to week 11 of U.S. History. So this historical exploration in this unit in this week will focus on the crucial aspects of the North and the South uh, divide. It will focus on the political events and the stark contrast between the candidates in the 1860 election. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the economic, uh, social and political differences between the North and the South, the role of the Free Soul Party in the election of 1848, um, perceptions of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, the positions of Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas on slavery, and the election of 1860. So we're going to start by contrasting the economies, societies, and political views of the North and the South in the pre-Civil War era. The North was characterized by a rapidly industrializing economy, fueled by manufacturing, trade, and a growing urban population. With a more diverse economy, the North embraced a wage-based labor system and had a more cosmopolitan society. In contrast, the South relied heavily on agriculture, particularly the cultivation of cotton, tobacco, and other cash crops sustained by the labor of enslaved people. This agrarian society shaped the Southern economy, which was centered around plantation agriculture and a predominantly rural, hierarchical society. Uh, politically, the North tended to support a more centralized government and was largely against the expansion of slavery into new territories, whereas the South advocated the state's rights and the preservation and expansion of slavery. We will then move on to the role of the Free Soil Party in the election of 1848, this political party emerged as a voice against the extension of slavery. Led by figures like Martin Van Buren, the Free Soil Party advocated for, quote, free soil, free labor, free men, end quote, opposing the spread of slavery into Western territories acquired after the Mexican-American War. Although they didn't win the election, their impact was significant, particularly in the North laying the groundwork for future anti-slavery political movements. The Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 became a pivotal point in the escalating tensions between the North and the South. Proposed by Senator Stephen A. Douglas, the act aimed to organize the territories of Kansas and Nebraska and let settlers decide on the issue of slavery through popular sovereignty. However, the act was perceived differently by the North and the South. In the North, it was seen as a violation of early agreements that restricted the expansion of slavery. Conversely, the South viewed it as an opportunity to expand slavery into new territories. This differing interpretation exasperated tensions, eventually leading to violent conflicts in Kansas, known as, quote, bleeding Kansas, as pro- and anti-slavery settlers clashed over its territory's status. Moving on, we will compare the position of two prominent figures, Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas, on the issue of slavery. Lincoln, a member of the Republican Party, opposed the spread of slavery into new territories, citing its moral injustice and incompatibility with the principles of the Declaration of Independence. He advocated for containing slavery within the existing states where it already existed. In contrast, Stephen Douglas supported popular sovereignty, advocating that residents of each territory should determine the status of slavery through democratic vote. They were known for their famous debates, including the 1858 Illinois Senate race. So Lincoln's victory in the election of 1860 marked a turning point. He won the presidency without a single Southern electoral vote reflecting the growing split between the North and the South. His election prompted several Southern states to secede from the Union, meaning to separate, ultimately leading to civil war. So to conclude, the economic, social and political disparities between the North and the South, along with the impact of key events and contrasting political views, 
played a pivotal role in the eruption of the Civil War. Understanding these historical factors is crucial to comprehend the course of American history and its lasting implications. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all and working with you all during class. Thank you.